Hello everyone, my name is Ming. Recently I got a question that I want to address today. So I got a question uh, Jim asked under one of my YouTube videos. He asked, in the future please do a video on how you ensure sharpness on landscape photos on X-T2. I am very interested in your technique, especially when you have foreground interest. Thanks in advance. So thank you Jane for asking the question and today I'm going to talk about how you can ensure sharpness on Fujifilm X-T2. First, let me start with something that's not directly related to camera or focusing technique, but it's very important and that is a good tripod. A good tripod is crucial to landscape photography um, because for me mostly I shoot in either sunrise or sunset for the best lighting conditions. But those best lighting conditions are low light conditions and I always shoot at the lowest ISO for best image quality. So that means I'm always doing long exposures. If I don't have a tripod, if I shoot everything handheld and that's guarantee blurry photos. So when I go out to shoot, I always carry a tripod with me, always set up my camera on top of the tripod to reduce camera shake. And also many people have this uh, remote control so basically when uh, they, they press this button to trigger the shutter and capture a photo, that way they don't need to touch their camera. Again, reduce camera shake. Uh, I do have one, but I prefer easier setup. So most of the time I use two seconds building timer in my Fujifilm X-T2. Uh, most of the time, two seconds timer works perfectly. And I found that sometimes I would use 10 seconds because if I have a longer telephoto zoom lens attached to my Fujifilm X-T2, if I shoot at say 200 millimeter focal length and I found that 2 seconds sometimes is not long enough for the shake to completely go away. So in that situation, I would use 10 seconds building timer. Alright, the next thing I want to talk about is aperture. You probably already know that a small aperture means greater depth of field, meaning a greater range will be in focus. And a big aperture uh, means shallower depth of field, meaning uh, a smaller range, a narrower range will be in focus. So for landscape photography, in order to get foreground and the background both in focus, you probably want to shoot with a small aperture. But that doesn't mean you always shoot with f22, f16. Because after a certain point, if your aperture is smaller than a certain point, then diffraction kicks in, which reduces the sharpness of your photo. So for full frame camera, full frame system, I mostly shoot between f8 and f11. And usually I don't go beyond f14. For Fujifilm X-T2, since it's a APS-C crop sensor, the sensor size is smaller than 4 frame. And for example, this is 10 to 24 millimeter lens, and this lens is designed for APS-C sensor. So for this lens, uh, a f5.8 is more like f8 on 4 frame, and f8 on this lens is more like f11 on 4 frame. So with Fujifilm X-T2 and this 10 to 24 millimeter f4 lens, uh, or any other lens. I mostly shoot between f5.6 and f8 and I usually don't go beyond f11. Now you have a tripod and you know what aperture to shoot at. Now let's talk about focusing technique or what I do to focus. First let me talk about uh, the focus mode on my Fujifilm X-T2. 99% of the time I set my Fuji X-T2 to manual focus mode. And don't be scared. Uh, that doesn't mean I always manually focus. Uh, that means I most of the time use a technique called back button focusing. With Fujifilm X-T2, I think back button focusing is really easy. So set your Fuji to manual focus mode and then press the AFL button on the back of the camera. When you press the button, basically that uh, engage the auto focusing feature so your camera can actually auto focus even though the camera is in manual focus mode. So what I would do to focus is basically I would start with the largest aperture available. So for example this lens 10 to 24 millimeter f4 lens the largest aperture is f4. So I will use f4 first 
then I'm going to back button focusing focus on the foreground and then um, I will gradually reduce the size of aperture to maybe f5.6 or f8 depend on the scene so at this point I'm certain my foreground is in focus the next step I do is to check if my background is in focus at this point I think it's fairly easy to do with uh, Fujifilm X-T2 so on the back LCD screen um, I have two little window screens here and the screen on the left shows me the overall composition shows me the whole frame and the another little screen on the right hand side so that shows me the focus point at 100% scale so looking at the screen at the right hand side I can determine if my background or if that focus point area is really sharp really in focus so basically what I do is I move the focus point to background and then I look at the screen on the right hand side and see if my background is in focus I think another feature can help you is focus peaking um, because basically focus peaking highlights the area that is in focus so you can see which area is in focus which area is not so I have another video talking about how focus peaking can help manual focus I will put a link somewhere or in the description below so feel free to check it out oh by the way if you don't know how to get to the uh, split two screens setup um, basically you make sure your Fuji X-T2 is in manual mode and then you press the display button so basically that switch the display mode then one of the display mode is the split two, two screens uh, where one screen shows you the overall composition the other screen shows you 100% scale at this point if I think my background is in focus it's sharp then I just capture the photo because I know my foreground is in focus my background is sharp then I capture the photo I'm happy I move on if at this point I I don't think my background is quite in focus not sharp enough then what I do is I manually slowly turn this focus ring um, I push the focus point towards the background and I keep checking if background is in focus so I keep pushing the uh, focus point towards the background until I think the background is in focus and after the background is in focus now I move I use the joystick I move the focus point back to the uh, foreground and I check if now my foreground is still in focus so now if my foreground is in focus then I know my background is also in focus then I capture the photo I'm happy I move on if now the foreground becomes a little bit blurry out of focus then it could suggest two things one um, I might need to use a smaller aperture if I was using f5.6 now I need to use f8 if I was using f8 now I need to use f11 or if you are already using a very very small aperture for example f11 on Fujifilm X-T2 and you don't want to go smaller then you need to use a technique called focus stacking um, because there's no way for you to capture the whole depth of field in one photo so what you need to do is capture multiple photos and focus on different parts in each photo so for example if I take three photos and then I have the first photo focus on the foreground and the second photo focus on the middle ground and then the third photo focus on the background and later in post-processing I can combine all three photos together I can get the foreground from the first photo get the uh, middle ground from the second and the background from the uh, last photo then I combine those parts together so I know my uh, results the final image is going to be focused everywhere I probably will do another video about how I do focus stacking I probably will give you some examples uh, so yeah so please subscribe to my youtube channel um, for more tips just like this and for more tutorials more videos to be honest I think f8 on Fujifilm X-T2 is good enough for most of the scenarios when I was shooting Nikon when I was still shooting full frame I tend to use focus stacking technique a little bit more and after I switch to Fuji after I shoot primary with Fuji then I found well I just go to f8 and most of the time it works I think 
Uh, I've been shooting with Fuji X-T2 for more than a year now and I only maybe have one or two photos that I used focus stacking technique. The last step I would do to ensure my photos are sharp is to review my photos. So I go to the playback button uh, and then I review my photos. I zoom in as close as I can. Uh, I do have a complaint with Fuji X-T2 that is when I shoot in RAW and when I review RAW files I can't zoom in 100% compared to my Nikon. Uh, if uh, When I shot with my Nikon, when I review my photos, I can zoom really, really, really close to the subject to tell if the photo is in focus or not, if, the, if that part is sharp or not. But with Fuji X-T2, when reviewing the RAW files, I can only get to about maybe 50%. Uh, I can't zoom to that close. I can't zoom as close as I could with the Nikon cameras and if you are, if I shoot JPEG files then I can zoom really really close to uh, the focus point to the foreground and the background to check if it is in focus so I don't know why I really hope the next generation can allow me to uh, zoom in really really close when I reviewing my uh, raw files I, I think that would be uh, much much better with that being said, there is actually a workaround uh, because the Fuji X-T2 can take two SD cards and you can choose to uh, put a RAW file in one card and then put JPEG in the other card. So what you can do is when you are in playback review mode and you just go to the card that has your JPEG files and then you can zoom in really close on your JPEG files to check if uh, your photo is in focus and at the same time the other SD card has all the raw files. Alright that's pretty much it. I think that's uh, what I do to ensure sharpness on my landscape photos with Fuji X-T2. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you find this video is helpful and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for more videos, more tips, tutorials just like this one and I hope to see you next time. See ya.